weather is changing. You know, I know that I know some people like the, the falling of the leaves from the trees, but I'm not really too crazy about you know that transition. We do what we gotta do. We live in Buffalo. We might have to control over that. Just gonna share a couple of scriptures. Uh, Psalm 23. God is my shepherd. I don't need a thing. I'm reading from the message translation. translation. You have bedded me down in, in lush meadows. You find me quiet pools to drink from. Truly your word. You let me catch my breath. You send me in the right direction, even when the way goes through death valley. I'm not afraid when you walk by my, at my side. Your trusty shepherd's crook makes me feel secure. You serve me a six-course dinner right in front of my enemies. Revolve my drooping head. My cup brims with blessing. Your beauty and love chase after me every day of my life. And I'm back home in the house of God for the rest of my life. Yeah. I don't know, lately I've just been having these moments of just like, just different emotions going through my, you know, I'll be about one minute I'm angry, next minute I'm, I'm happy, next minute I'm laughing. And it's just like, God, what is going on? And the Bible says that the earth groans, we groan with the longing for the manifestation of the sons of God. And I think that's just some of the things that we go through within ourselves you know so we just want to be be alert to those things in those situations and just try to handle them the best way that we can um luke 12 and this is 25 says keep your shirts on keep your lights on be like house servants waiting for their master to come back from his honeymoon awake and ready to open the door when he arrives and knocks Lucky the servants whom the master finds on watch. He'll put on an apron and sit them at the table and serve them a meal, sharing his wedding feast with them. It doesn't matter what time of night when he arrives, they're awake and so blessed. I think we're just in one of those moments, right? Just in one of those moments where we just, where we just have to be alert to what's going on. So um, be blessed, be, uh, be alert, be be vigilant. God, we thank you for this day. God, we come into your house, Lord, Lord, just thanking you to be able to fellowship with other believers and being able to glorify your name, lift up your name together. We don't take it for granted, God. We come with a heart of expectation. What are you expecting, God? We expect you. We expect you to manifest your glory, manifest your presence in our lives, in our homes, in our church family. God, we give you glory and we give you honor. God, we lift your name up. We magnify you. And we glorify you in this place today. In the name of Jesus, we lift you up. We look past every situation, every circumstance. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you glory. We magnify your holy name. The name of Jesus. At your name, demons tremble. Every name shall bow at your name. Every, every name shall bow. And God, we lift you up. We glorify and we magnify you. The King of Kings. The Lord of Lords. There is no one like you. No one above you. No one beside you. You are God all by yourself. And you don't need anybody else. You don't need anyone else, God. And we have the privilege to glorify you and lift up your name. We have the privilege and the honor of coming before your throne of grace. God, of giving you glory and magnifying you above everything. Above everything. Every pressure that life that brings, everything that life brings in our way to try to distract us from the goal of pressing towards the mark of the high car. God, we give you glory. We honor you. We pray that you be magnified and you be lifted up like never before. Your name be lifted up. Your name be lifted up. You are, you are always with us. You said you'd never leave us or forsake us. Your present help in the time of trouble. You are, you are with us, God. And we give you glory. And we give you honor. And God, we thank you. God, we give you glory. And God, we come before you, God. We thank you for putting a smile on our face. God, we thank you for putting a smile on our face, God. In the midst of trials, God, we pray for the sick and the shunning. Every person that is dealing with illness, God. God, we pray that you would heal their bodies and touch them from the crown of their heads. To the soles of their feet. You said that we're two or three are gathered together in your name. You would be in the midst, God. And we come together in agreement, God. When we say that it is you, they are you in every situation. Every situation. We lift up our church family. We lift 
declare healing in this place. Healing in the atmosphere. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. God, we thank you in advance. God, we thank you in advance. God, we praise you. We lift you up in Jesus' name.
oftentimes we don't recognize them. So they come and they go, and we blame God for not coming to our rescue because we didn't recognize the moment. Are you here? Are you here? Are you, are you good? You must recognize the moment, right? And so I am. Um, I, I just want to broaden our scope. Um, concerning this moment and I want to go to the word now I'm not going to the um, the apostles uh, second letter of opinion chapter 3 verse number 15 are you tracking with me I am not interested in your opinion I want the word of God that's what we need that's what we need Yes, we esteem, we esteem the word higher than our daily bread, not the opinion of others. Right. Right? Now, I'm not discounting opinions, right? We know opinions come primarily in two forms. You have the informed opinion and you have the uninformed opinion. You got to know which opinion you're hearing. Right. But that's another track. I don't want to go there. So, this moment. Second Kings chapter 3. Make a note. You want to read it. I don't even want to take the time to read it. There, there were these this conglomerate of nations that came against the people of God. And uh, three of the kings got together and they decided they were going to go to war. And they, they rallied their people, rallied the armies, rallied, rallied the livestock. And they marched. The Bible says for seven days yes, they sir. marched. And there was no water. Come on. There was no water. Okay? So, so. Seven days in. How many of you feel like you've been yes, sir. for a long time? Yeah. <laughs> My dad used to tell me that he walked to school uphill both ways. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I said, wait, Dad. If you walked this, if it was uphill one way, it had to be downhill the other way, right? No, nope, it was uphill both ways. In the driving snowstorm. You Anybody feel like you've been doing that right now? Yeah. One, of, one of the things that we have to recognize is that when God comes to our rescue, He's there to rescue us. Right. Right. But until rescue comes, you got to keep going. Got to. So, so, so here they are. Here they are. Here they are. Uh, no water. No water. Second Kings chapter three. Let's start reading. Um, Verse number 13, and Elijah said to the king of Israel, what have I to do with you? Go to the prophets of your father and to the prophets of your mother. But the king of Israel said to him, uh, he wasn't a, necessarily a God-fearing king. The kings uh, of Israel said to him, no, it is the Lord who has called these three kings um, to give them into the hand of Moab. And Elisha said, as the Lord of hosts lives before whom I stand, were it not that I have regard for Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, the God will give you favor with somebody. And they will do for you what they otherwise would not do, right? But it's the favor of the Lord. Somebody say it's the favor of God. It's the favor of God. He said, I would neither look at you nor see you. Verse 15. But now bring me a musician. Yes, sir. Prophetic anointing leans into more than an anointed musician. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. They ain't gotta be, I ain't talking about singing and singing good. I don't like it. Because people can sing and sing good and not be anointed. That's right. That's right. And if you notice, yeah. after a while, it get on your nerves. Right. After, after a while, I turn Stevie Wonder off. That's right. That's right. That's right. That brother didn't say it. But after a while, I turned him off. Right. Right? It's good, but it ain't anointed. Right. You know, ain't saying nothing. He said, bring me, and the King James said, bring me a minstrel. Yeah. Bring me a musician. Bring me somebody who understands that when they enter into the courts of the Lord, they enter in a certain way. Bring me somebody who understands that when I come into the presence of the Lord, I'm 
using my 10 string instrument. Whether you want to hear me or not, I'm here to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. When you get in that kind of environment, when you get in that kind of atmosphere, it makes a push on your prophetic anointing. I believe in the priesthood of all believers, but I also believe in the prophethood of all believers. Boy, I wish I had time to do that teaching, but I don't. Check me out some other day. Okay, I really believe that when we as the people of God get into certain environments and certain atmosphere, something on the inside gets triggered. Are you, are you okay? And you start sensing, hearing, seeing. You get an unction. You get something stirs on the inside when you bring in a musician. Sir, sir, sir. Anybody know? Should I go down regarding you? Uh, but now, bring me a musician. And when the musician played, the hand of the Lord came upon him. In, in, in an environment of when we come together to worship, you ought to expect the hand of the Lord to come upon you. You should expect it. Sister, sister, oh, sister, oh. I'm just gonna say, sister, oh. You know what I'm talking about. There, you're, you're battling and you're fighting and you're in warfare. Yeah. But as you were up here praying, there were, people were praying for you. But then the tables turned yeah. and you began to pray for somebody else. Yeah. And I heard God remind me in that moment of the paraphrase from Ephesians chapter number six, where, where the paraphrase says this: What you may yeah. have. God will make happen for you. Here's a strategy for you, sister. Whenever you see somebody up here receiving prayer, receiving ministry, you run up here and you pray for them too. Because what you make happen for somebody else. where her deliverance lies. It's not in what she's waiting for me to give her. It's what I've given her to give away. I don't know what I'm going to do. Y'all have brought me a musician. And I'm losing my mind. Up here. I'm living out the text, y'all. This is crazy. Okay. I'm going to have to send all of y'all home. Okay, where are we? Where are we? The Remember this plain hand of the Lord came upon him, and he said, Thus says the Lord, I will make this green bed full of pools. For thus says the Lord, you shall not see wind or rain, but that stream bed shall be filled with water. You are busy looking for and or a sign that God is working in your situation. God says stop looking for signs and just fixate on the thing you're expecting from me. You'll miss the thing because you're looking for a sign. God said ain't going to be no wind. Ain't going to be no rain clouds. Ain't going to be no rain. You look this way and turn to look that way. When you look back, the stream of air will be full of water. God is on the precipice of filling your water pot. He is on the precipice of doing the very thing that you're looking for and searching for. God, when are you going to do this? You, you, y'all, y'all remember the Bible said, God didn't tell me if you see any rain clouds. And the servant went out and said, I don't see nothing. Came back. I don't see nothing. I don't see nothing. Went back and said, I don't see a cloud. It's a little cloud. Little itty bitty cloud. Except about the size of a. You know how hard it is to see a cloud this size in the sky that big. But that's the same. They say, I see the cloud the size of God's hand. Because that would have obliterated the sky itself.
so, but the clock the size of a man's head. And the prophet said, that's okay. It's getting ready to happen. Stop looking for the sign and position yourself for the manifestation of the thing that you're waiting for. You're wasting time looking for the wind. You know the other day I smell rain. I was, you ever smell rain? Honey? I was on the job and I looked at the phone and I said, listen, we better close this hole up. I said, I smell the rain. He said, yeah, Bill, I smell it too. And we hurried up and backfilled the hole. And sure enough, we got a little sun shower. You sniff in the air. Anybody smell rain? Anybody? It ain't about the wind. It's not about the rain. It's about the wonder working power of the Lord. For God to have the water come up from the ground. In the Garden of Eden, that's how it was watered. It never rained. Right. It didn't rain. The Bible says that the garden was watered from the water that came up. So what you think is a hard thing, God said, I always do that. And so you're looking for stuff up here. Listen, and it's right. coming out of here. Listen, right. Jesus said, St. John 7 38. Close my Bible. I'm going. Pastor George is coming. He that believes on me as the scripture has said. Out of your that's what the King James says, your belly. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. I wish I had time to tell you about living water in Jerusalem. They were surrounded by salt water sources. And so living water really means fresh water. Water that brings life. It was scarce there. It was scarce. And Jesus said the thing that's so hard for you to find the most precious thing, the thing that is a high commodity, instead of looking around for it. Look, somebody told me to say it's already in you. Your miracle is already. Deliverance is already. Healing is already. Hope is already. Peace is already. Listen, tomorrow morning, Lou Williams and Dean Cooper, I want to see y'all on Oak Hill Street, see South Buffalo, about 10 a.m. I'm like, bring me a musician. I got a bunch of heathens that I work with. They need Jesus. Nah, bring me a musician. Y'all just do a drive-by. Do that when you drive by. Do that again. Do that again. Just do me a drive-by. That's the one I want. Does that push on your anointing? It ought to push on your anointing. And so when we come to praise and worship, that's the team. They have brought the musician. You know what I'm expecting now? Not the voices. I'm expecting the hand of the Lord. Isn't that what Elisha the text says? That when the musician played, then the hand of the Lord fell. I'm, I'm expecting the hand of the Lord to fall. I'm expecting that. I'm not expecting Mike to sing or neither Pastor Tab. I love these musicians and they play so well. But that's not where my expectation lies. My expectation lies on the hand of the Lord. What we do when we come into it, create an atmosphere like this, is we create the perfect storm for the hand of the Lord. You know what you need most? The hand of the Lord. I know what I need most. Bring me a musician. <laughs> and if, if you can't bring me one, I'll be one. I'll make a joyful noise. That's unto the Lord. I'll lift up my voice. Like a trumpet. 
please just get your offering in your hand. Just hold it tight, okay? Just hold it tight. Um, give through the give through the app. Give through the app. Write your check. If you need to write your check. Hold your money because as soon as we finish communion, I'm gonna ask Pastor Jason to come on up. Is that okay with you all? Amen. Okay. And so that means don't say I get to keep my money this week. No, you still need to give. Amen. Well, you need to give if you want to be blessed. Amen. amen. So um, as we're about to do communion, and it's um, I, I, the word is not. Look like God works things out, you know, because I was thinking of something earlier, I don't even know, the day before, whatever, maybe this morning, and I'm like, in my mind, I'm, I'm hearing the scripture, and I'm like, that's not a communion scripture. This is before I even get here, you know, but then I'm like, I get here, and, and they're mentioning, uh, Sister Trina's telling the pastor, what is communion today, and I'm like, okay, I need something. I need a scripture. I don't need anything. You know, God, he provides what he wants us to do. Amen. If I could just share a couple definitions for you, and then I'm going to share a scripture. And it's not a scripture that we normally might think of, but just tra- uh, I like a pastor track with me for a minute. And I've shared the word before communion, the sharing or exchanging of intimate thoughts and feelings, especially when the exchange is on a spiritual level. Amen. Spiritual level communion. A group community, excuse me, a group of people living in the same place or having a particular characteristic in common. Are we in a particular place? Yes, we are. Do we have a particular characteristics in common? Yes, we do. Do I have any other believers in the house? Yes, do I have anybody in other lo- that loves the Lord in the house? Amen. Yes, we are. a particular group of people, amen, coming together to what? Give God praise yes. and worship. Not for what he's done, but for who he is. Yes, right. Another part of that, um, you do the definition shows you another um, another um, definition, and I like this one here. It says a feeling of fellowship with others as a result as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. The sense of community that organized religion can bring. Now, in the scripture, yeah, I got a scripture. I got a scripture, and the scripture. As a memory of one that I like sharing. And it comes from Acts, yes. the second chapter. Yeah. <laughs> it talks about believers form a community. Mm-hmm. Acts chapter 2, verses 42. Mm-hmm. All the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to the fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper and to prayer. Deep sense of awe came over them, and the apostles performed miracles, many miracles and signs and wonders. I'm gonna read one more verse. And all the believers met together in one place and shared everything they had. Are we in one place? One place. At a perfect time. Perfect time. One accord. Amen. On one accord, giving the Father, the Heavenly Father, praise and honor because it's well due. Thank, saying thank you is just not enough. That's, that's all I can give, but that's all I have to give. Say, Lord, I thank you for this death. Thank you for what you've done for me. Yeah. And, and um, for those that might say, well, where's the communion scripture at? <laughs> if you go to Matthew, uh, Mark 14, I think it's like down to the 22nd verse or something like that. Yeah. That's your communion scripture that you need to have that one. Right. But all of us together, <laughs> one common mind, yeah. one common cause to exalt Jesus equip the saints and win the loss. We're together in commu- yeah. community. Right. So while we're in community together, let's have communion. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. So, um, so if I just look at this, it looks like grape juice and awake. But to the believer, I love that it's personal. 
I thank you, Lord. Thank you. So as you prepare yourself, thank you. My God, thank take you. Take bread. Yes. Thank you, Lord. And you eat. And you take the cup and drink, remembering you, what God, what Jesus did on Calvary did for you. Yes, yes. If you're a believer, remember he said he shed his blood for you. If you're a free believer, remember, this is what he did. He shed his blood for you. He broke his body. He shed his blood just for you. That we can have everlasting life if we choose him. You know, sometimes we come in anticipation for some, some certain things, but God does what he wants to do. Amen? Amen? And if we are willing and able to just allow him to take control, we will see him work in a mighty way. Amen? Amen. Amen. That is always our desire when we come here. I believe that um, as believers, we want to see God work in our lives. Amen. As we come together, as Pastor George talked about, in communion together, in one common bond. Amen. That is Jesus Christ. And we come and we just know that God is going to do something. He is a provider. Amen. amen. He really does do things in our lives. And we are just so grateful for everything that he is doing in our lives. We thank him. We honor him. And we bless him. Uh... Okay, so I got a couple thoughts that I would like to share today. Um, I've been thinking a lot, you know, sometimes God will show you some things in Scripture and you'll look and you'll say, wow. Yeah. You know, um, me, me and Sister Nita was talking this morning on, sometimes we, we had, as many things we have read, like she mentioned it, Scripture that are familiar, meaning that means we have read them before. 
and sometimes God will give you the revelation of what it is for in your life now. Right now. And that's what's the that's so great. Because guess what? When I read it back when I was 18 years old, doesn't mean same words, but it's something different right now where I'm at in my life. Amen. Amen. Right. Amen. So we just thank God for um, just being able to give us a right now word. Amen. Amen. I want to share a couple of thoughts, and um, I want to talk about living in a place of provision, a place of trust, and a place of promise. Living in a place of provision, a place of trust, and a place of promise. You know... As a child of God, we have certain privileges. Matter of fact, just as a child, period, when we look at it in a natural sense, there's a privilege when we have great parents. Amen? Amen. When we have parents, there's privilege of knowing that they have us. Mm. Yeah, you know, I've never, I, I think I told this story a long time ago. Um, I was in a store, a grocery store one day. And it was this little kid, little little baby girl, and she was, she was, you could tell she was able to walk at that time. I mean, she couldn't have been no more than maybe two or three years old. And she was with her dad, so she looked at me. She was, he had her hand, and she looked up at me. And of course, I'm a big guy, I'm probably intimidated her. And so she looked at me, and then she reached up for her dad. And her dad picked her up, and she looked at me like, mm hmm. <laughs> Just in case you thought she was going to get me. <laughs> I got my dad who's protecting me. It was one of them looks that I kind of just chuckled and laughed to myself. But isn't that the way we look at our parents that they have us? What more God? What more God? I talked about being in a place of provision. Guess what? God is a provider, amen? You know, Jesus says something in Matthew 6 and 31 through 32 that, you know, if we would read it constantly, we will understand that he is a provider. Amen? Amen. It says, so don't listen to what he says. He says in 31, he says, so don't worry about these things saying, what shall I eat? Yeah. What will I drink? And what will I wear? Listen to what verse 32. He says, these things dominate. The thoughts of unbelievers. But your heavenly father already knows all your he knows. <laughs> he already knows all your needs. You know something? Whatever dominates you will control everything that you do. That's why he said in this version. It dominates the thoughts of unbelievers. We're not unbelievers, amen. We believe. We, believe. we just sung it till it was <laughs> dry in our mouths. Right. We believe. <laughs> but it's not about your words, it's about your actions. Yeah. We really believe. Help us. Yes. Yes. Help us, Pastor. Help us. Wow. Right. Do you really believe that he's a provider? Do you really believe that he takes care of his children? Provision goes before us. Yeah. It goes before us. Yeah. And we can trust in this. Amen? Amen. We can trust in him. He is, his name speaks of trustworthiness. That's right. yeah. I love how it says in, in Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3, it says, You will keep me, you will keep them in perfect peace. Yeah. All who trust in you. Yes, sir. That's why it's so important to trust. Being in a place of trust. That's right. <laughs> he will keep that person in perfect peace. All who trust in you. And those thoughts are fixed on you. There's a benefit in trusting the Lord. Amen. Yes, you will not have regular peace. You will have perfect peace. Perfect. And we do know perfect peace is a person. Yes, he is. He will have you in perfect peace if you would just fix yourself on who he is. Not the situation, but who he is. Yes, sir. 
I'm trying to get myself into that place of always just trusting in the Lord. Not getting into a place of really wrapping my, right, my mind around who he is right. and not the situation. Mm -hmm. It's so easy to see the situation and say, man, fear comes upon you. Yeah. Because of the situation. And we're going to get into that when we get into the text. But we have to trust in the Lord. Amen? Amen. And understand that this, when I talked about being in a place of promise. You know, when somebody promises you something, mm -hmm. the promiser fully intends to live up to what he or she said. He or she said. Amen. It's the truth. When you make a promise to somebody, just in our human sense, you really intend to do that. Amen? That's, right. That's why when you hear somebody say, I promise you, yep. you're like, oof, I can take that one to the bank. <laughs> but we also are human, so hmm, that person can break a promise. Right. God does not break promises. He does it. What he said he's going to do, yes. he is going to do it. Yes. Yes. Isaiah 55 and 11 says, it is the same with my word. I send it out yes, sir. and it always produces fruit. Yes, sir. When my word goes out, yes, sir. it's producing something. Yes, He's not just saying it to be saying it. There's purpose to God's word. It's producing fruit. It will accomplish all that I want it to. And it will prosper everywhere I send it. Everywhere I send my word, the Lord said it will prosper. So if you have a word from the Lord, hang on to that word. Because it's going to prosper. It's going to prosper, amen? So being in a place of provision, a place of trust, and a place of promise, amen? Amen. Let's go to the text. I am going to be coming out of Genesis chapter 26. <laughs> I, you know, it's so funny. Now, I promise you, it, it, you know, and I'm starting to, you know how they take, some people will say that um, you put a Bible down, let's say you have a regular Bible, like an uh, actual physical copy of the Bible, you put it down and just let it fall. And a lot of people do that, let it fall, and then whatever you read, you know, you feel like that's for you. What? <laughs> okay, I don't have many physical Bibles, but I have an iPad. So I ended up opening up my Bible app a couple weeks ago, and for whatever reason, this scripture was on the first thing that came on. I'm like, I don't know, I've never even read this scripture before ever. <laughs> but then I began to read it, God started showing me some things. And I always believe that when he shows me things, of course, first of all, it's for me. Amen. And then I'm able to, as I practice this thing, I'm able to share it with others. Amen? Amen? And so, Genesis chapter 26. I want to read the first five verses, but I'm probably not going to read them in a row. Amen? I'm, I'm going to pause and stop. Okay. Okay? Because there's certain things that I want us to get as we read them. And I don't want to go too fast. Amen? Genesis chapter 26, verse 1. And I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. If you have that version or whatever version you have, follow along, please. If you have it, say amen. 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 And the word of the Lord says, A severe famine now struck the land. As, as had happened before in Abraham's time. So Isaac moved to Gear where Abimelech, king of the Philistines, lived. Now, I want to stop here, and I want you, first of all, I want to give a little bit of context. Pastor, Ty, I think it was Pastor Craig said it long before. We can't just assume that people understand and know right, the story, right, right, right? Right, right, So I want to give you a very small context of what's going on here so you can be able to understand what Isaac is going through. Mm -hmm. Number one, we understand that Isaac is the promised son That's right. of Abraham, amen? amen? The promised son of Abraham. In the previous chapter, Abraham passed away. So he's gone. So all of a sudden, Isaac is dealing with that. So he buries his father. 
And so then now Isaac is beginning his life. He is the promised son. And he's beginning his life. And so now he has uh, children with his wife, twins, Esau, Jacob, amen? Mm -hmm. And he settled now in the promised land. Okay? It's very important that we understand where he is when this happens. Okay? So it says that a famine hit. So what I did was, I went and I said, you know, I understand a little bit what famines are, but I really want to understand the definition of it. And so a famine is an extreme shortage of food, not only food, a drought, and it says excessive dryness in the land. And really, a lot of times it's been looked at, it was as God's judgment. Meaning, everything was cut off. That means not only could me or my family eat, but my cattle can't eat either because the, 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 the land is dry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nothing there is destruction. It's destruction. Thank you, Jimmy. It's destruction. So understand where the mind of Isaac, I want you to almost put yourself in the eyes, in the mind of Isaac. He settled in the place of promise. How many things, how many times God has promised you something? Yeah. Then all of a sudden, something crazy happens. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, so we're thinking about the small things that we're thinking about crazy. This is really crazy. Right, right. And I want you to understand this. Before Abraham died, he gave Isaac everything. Mm. Isaac inherited everything. That, and I don't know if you know it or not, but Abraham was rich, rich. Yes, sir. <laughs> I, had to, I had to put two of them on there because he had a lot. And everything that he had, the Bible says he gave to Isaac. So that means he inherited. So that means not only is he going to suffer? Not only his wife and his kids were go going to suffer, all of his livestock was going to suffer. So immediately, just like all of us would do, we go into survival mode. And most of the time when we go into survival mode, we start using this thing. What am I going to do? It's true. Amen. Come on, y'all. Y'all been here before, right? When something crazy happens, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I got to do something. I, it ain't just me. It's my family. It's the things that I own. They are going to suffer and die if I don't make a decision. So we're going to survival mode. And so he goes down to a place Really, and I found out as I did a study, it's a place of familiarity, really. Uh -huh. Because his father used to live here and settle here. Yeah. The same place. This is before Israel, of course, and Philistine and the Philistines had an issue with each other. Right, right. They actually was a little, if you look into it, it actually was friendly. So he went to a place where he felt that was safe before he went down to a place where he knew that he could escape the famine, which was Egypt. So listen to what God says and tells Isaac in verse 2. And the Lord appeared to Isaac and said, Do not go down to Egypt, but do as I tell you. How many times have God told you, do not do the thing that you're thinking about, yes. but listen to what I'm telling you to do. Yes. Yes. Now, I tried to put myself into his head because I'm thinking to myself, he's thinking to himself, if I don't do something, everything associated with me is going to suffer. And then you get the word from the Lord that says, be still. Be still. Don't do nothing. Matter of fact, listen to what I tell you. Verse 3 says, live here as a foreigner in this land and I will be with you and I will bless you. Isn't that the great words that you want to hear from the Lord? Not only stand still but understand this. If you listen to what I'm telling you do, I am going to bless you. And I am going to be with you. I hereby confirm that I will give you these lands 
all the lands that you are and to your descendants, just as I solemnly promised to your to Abraham, your father. God provides. He has provision for the people of God. Amen. Yeah. Even when it looks like things are crazy, God has went. This is how I define provision. God specifically goes before us before we even get to the destination. Wow. He's such a provider that he, oh, listen, it might be a surprise to you about your situation, but it's not a surprise to him. So when he surprises you, listen, Isaac was settled. He was settled in the land that was going to be his. And then this situation happened. How many times have we been in places where Everything seems to be going so smoothly. And then God allows something to happen. What is your response? Probably like Isaac's. I got to go in survival mode. But then he got a word from the Lord. God provides, family. He goes before us. He goes before us. He is a provider. He tells him to stand still. I will sustain you in the place that you are. Do not go down to the place that you thought that was going to provide for your family. Watch what I do. That's what I got from that when I read that. Watch what I do. He provides. He provides so many different things with his provision. He provides direction. He provides direction. When he was going one way, God said, no, stay here. That is hard to do when you are already in your mind of thinking, what am I going to do? Your situation does not surprise God. He is an all-knowing God. He is an all-knowing God. So he tells Isaac, live here as a foreigner and I will be with you and I will bless you. I always believe that God, in this text, I'm seeing God wants to bless Isaac in an unfamiliar place. In a place that he's living that's not like the place that he was inherited. Amen? And so he's in a place where it's unfamiliar somewhat. He's living there as a foreigner. It's not his land. And God says, the place that's not your land, I am going to bless you. Not just so I can bless you, but when people see that I'm blessing you, they'll know that I'm God. God is going to bless us in a place where when people see it, they're going to say, he's serving the right God. We've seen that so many times in scripture where people that wasn't serving our God will say, your God must be the real God. Why? Because I see what he's doing in your life. God's going to do the same thing in your life. That he's going to bless you so that other people will see what he's doing in your life. If you go a little further down, you'll see that it actually didn't happen. Isaac was so blessed in the land of the Philistines to where the king said, you got to go. And ain't no more room for all the stuff that God is blessing you with. He was blessing him so much because of his obedience. Obedience comes with reward. We have to enter a place of trust. We have to enter a place of trust. You know what I used to think trust was and all it was is what somebody says or believing what somebody says. It's not just that. Is actually having confidence in who the person is. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit more than just believing what somebody says. When we believe God, we don't just believe in what he says. We have confidence in who he is. So that means that we know that what he's telling us is the truth. And it's going to take me to the place that I'm supposed to be. I have confidence in him. Amen? Amen. Sometimes experience is the confidence that we need, amen? amen. We've all experienced God and yes. what he does in our lives, amen? Yes, That's where our testimonies come from. Uh -huh. Believing our testimonies. Why? Because God has done some amazing things in our lives. We have experience in him, amen? amen. 
I, I read, I had never looked at this scripture before when it came down to confidence and experience, but it really, it, it opened my eyes to it. Psalms 27 and 1, this is what David said. He said, the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? Yeah. He's asking the question. I have the confidence in who God is through experience. So what am I fearing? The Lord is the strength of my life. For whom shall I be afraid? Why am I afraid when I know I've seen God open up doors? I've seen God do things in my life. I've seen God do things in your life. What do I have to be afraid of? I've seen it. In difficult times, it's very easy to fear. Amen. Isaac was scared, just like he should be. Destruction entered the land. He had to figure out what he needed to do. It was so easy to fear. But God's spoken word will dispel fear. When God gives you a word, it dispels fear. You don't have to have fear in your heart. Something else from David, Psalms 34. He says, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all of my fears. I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all of my fears. The enemy wants fear to take over your life. When things happen, he wants you to immediately believe, believe that well, this is the way it's going to be. Yeah. No. I serve a God who knows, who's all-knowing, and he loves me. And he's Amen. not going to keep me in the place where I am. Yes, sir. He is going to provide for me. He has provision for the things that concern me. And I have to know that. You have to get that in your heart. Because other than that, what David is saying here is that he had to deliver me from my fears. That means fear had to take over him. That's right. Fear will take over if yes, you allow it. Will. It will. It will take over your whole life if you will live a life of fear. Yep. But what does what, what did Paul say about to Timothy? That he's not given us that spirit. Right. He's given he's given us the spirit of power, of love, of yes. a sound mind. Right. Wrapping our mind around who God is. Mm -hmm. Not about the situation and the circumstance. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Amen. And so, we understand that the enemy wants to take over when it comes down to fear, but we're not going to allow him. Amen? Amen. Amen? So going back to verse 3, he says, Live here as a foreigner in this land, and I will be with you, and I will bless you. I hereby confirm that I will give you these lands to your descendants, just as I solemnly promised to Abraham, your father. Verse 4 says, I will cause your descendants to be become numerous as the skies as the stars in the sky, and I will give them these lands as though your descendants, I'm sorry, and through your descendants, all nations will be blessed. Isn't that's, that's what we should be praising the Lord for, amen? Because we're blessed because they were blessed. In verse 5, which I love here, he says, and I will do this because Abraham listened to me and obeyed my requirements my commands, my decrees, and my instructions. Living in the place of promise. Promise, that word is connected to covenant. I love how here God reaffirms to Isaac the covenant that he made to his father. Isn't it amazing how Isaac is blessed by what Abraham did? Amen. Yeah. Because of his obedience, he says, I'm doing this because of your father. Abraham did all the things he was supposed to do. When God said, get up, get from around your family and go where I tell you, what did he do? He did. He didn't say, well, Lord, I don't know where you're taking me, but, um, you know, my mother was just about to make some food. And, you know, <laughs> get up. And go. You know, when God promises you something, you know what you can do? You can take it to the bank, cash it, 
and get back on it. Amen? Amen. I love what God told Abraham in Genesis 22 and 16. He said, I swear by myself. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he said, I swear by myself I'm going to bless you. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, wow. Every time I read that, I was like, God, because guess what? There's nothing greater than his name. I swear by myself I'm going to bless you. And the Bible says that because of Abraham's obedience and because he had faith in him, it was counted unto him as righteousness. We have to recognize this, that when God says something to us, when he promises us something, he is going to fulfill that thing. But it's also stipulations on promises. It came from obedience. Abraham followed the Lord. He did all the things that the, that the Lord said to do. Now, he did some other things, too. But he did the things that God said for him to do. And because of his faith, it was coming to him as righteousness. You know, we've been called and we've been created to function by faith. Amen. 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 Matter of fact, it says without faith, it is impossible to please God. Didn't say maybe. It says it's impossible to please God. So because I, because I understand that, then I need to understand that I need to have faith in what he says yes. to me. Yes. I need to understand that I have to walk by faith. Yes, sir. I have to walk by it. If just because of Abraham's faith it was coming to him as a right relationship with God, what more me? I have to recognize how important faith is. I have to believe God. I have to trust what he says. Amen? And I have to believe that he's going to take care of me. That all of my situations, this big God that probably shouldn't be thinking much about me, is concerned about the things that concern That's what the me. Word says. That's a blessing. That's because I'm his child. And he loves me. You're his child. He loves you. And he's concerned about everything that concerns you. Amen? So I want us to understand the situation that is at hand. God allowed destruction to happen in a land that was promised. Just so that he can get Isaac in a place to trust and believe him. Sometimes God allows things to happen in your life to get you in the place where you can understand that you're listening for his voice. You're following what he's trying to tell you. And you're benefiting from your obedience. Isaac benefited from his obedience. Because he told him, not only am I going to be with you, I am going to bless you. My hand is going to be on your life. I'm going to sustain, sustain everything that goes along with you, who you are, and everything that's in your life. Be obedient to the Lord. Hear what God is saying. In that scripture I read, David said, I sought the Lord. Yes, sir. Pursue him. Yeah. Pursue his guidance. Yeah. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Yeah. In all your ways, acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. I believe that faith and trust is divinely connected. Can't have one without the other. We have to trust what he says and have faith in everything that he, he says to us. Because he is a God who does not lie. Everything he has spoken in your life, it will come to pass. It is just a time for everything. This season that Isaac was in, seemed to be comfortable until destruction happened. Sometimes we're in seasons where things just start happening out of nowhere. 
But who are you going to trust? Your thoughts? You going to trust what you're thinking? Or are you going to trust the Lord? If you haven't been in that place, you will be in that place. You will have an Isaac moment. And so my prayer is that when, for, when I have an Isaac moment, when all of a sudden things happen in my life that I wasn't expecting, I want to get into a place where I run to you. I want to be able to run to you. Knowing that you care for me. Knowing that you're concerned about my situation. And that you have already went before me. And have that situation already worked out. Amen? Amen. Amen. So as I close. I just want to encourage you. God has our lives in his hands. Uh, he has not forgotten about, forgot, forgotten about us. He is so concerned about us. And even the small things that happen in our lives, he sees. We just have to be able to be, understand that walking in his word Standing by faith and trust in him is what he desires. All you need is one word. All you need is one word. Isaac got one word. He says, Does not do not go where you were going before. Listen to what I'm telling you, and I will be with you and I will bless you. God is saying that to us today. Don't go off your own understanding and do something that you think that you understand what you need to do. But seek me for direction. Listen to the words that I'm saying to you. And if you do so, I will be with you and I will bless you. And so Father, we thank you for your word. We recognize that it's so easy for us to be in our own selves and to say, oh, I got this situation figured out. Yeah, this just popped up, but I'm going to figure this situation out. I already know what I need to do. But Father, let us be attentive to your words. And when you're speaking to us, you tell us not to go this way, but to go that way. Not to do this, but do that. Let us trust in you with all of our hearts. Because you know better than we do know. And Father, I just speak the blessing of the Lord on, these, on everyone, Father, who does these things. And I thank you, Father, for being so concerned about the things that concerns us. And Father, we will walk by faith and not by sight. We will move by your power you've given us that lives within us. The Holy Spirit that dwells within us. Who you say that he will not say anything that the Father does not say. So when we follow his directions, we recognize and we understand that we're going in the right direction. So Father, thank you for everything that you're doing. He's actually blessing every person in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.